Hey everybody, it's Riker Rider, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon. Today we are going to finish our journey through the snowfield and head through the royal capital, Velweb. We've got a few items to pick up first, though, one of which is really important. A couple chests on the way up. This one has Burning Wave. Oh, you know what? This reminds me. Uh, I never said I never said what the smoke ball does when I was. Uh... Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to demonstrate it this time, but I'll just tell you because uh, we've actually got some new enemies in this encounter: windy weasels. They can use spinning gales, and they can dodge your attacks. And they seem to be very good at dodging my attacks. I was going to say about the smoke ball. It's a repeatable item that allows a 100% escape rate from regular enemies. So you have no reason to use the run command anymore after that. It's just 100% guaranteed escape. So it, it's like if you get if the, if say you get into a dangerous encounter, you're just feeling impatient, or you're hunting rare enemies, then you can use that to run from the enemies that would take too long to fight, or you just plain don't feel like fighting. If you're a guy like me that likes to fight every enemy he comes to, you can always sell the smoke ball at a shop for I believe 200 gold. I'm not going to do that, though, because I still have to show off a lot of the rare enemies. One more up here that has a gushing magma, and there's just that one chest that's left. Let's see if we can't not grab it. Uh, let me just check my notes again. Uh, you have to go down the right slide to get this one. Prop two and prop four gets you the chest, which has the dancer's ring in it. It's the female version of the bandit's ring gives an extra 20 points of speed to a female character. I don't think I'm going to put it on anybody just yet, because I want Maru to gain SP and more Dragoon levels from the War God Sash. And most of the female characters are already fast enough anyway. And I want the male characters to catch up on their stuff. In any case, I'm going to see you back on the, pl the snow plateau at the top of this area. Alright, we're finally back. I can't believe I got into three battles while while on the way up. That's pretty ridiculous. Well, here we are. We finally reached the most extreme north uh, northwestern part of the world map, the capital Bellweb. We finally get to see just who this Emperor Diaz is, because if Rose is to be believed, then Emperor Diaz definitely died in the Dragon Campaign. Ah, right, the Dragoon Towers. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, right, I guess this would be the Forbidden Land to, uh, to humans. Because this is the, because this is basically the place where, uh, the humans, this is basically the human fort back in the days of the Winglies. Like, this was their, 
their uh, final stronghold. Thankfully, the encounter rate here is pretty low, so I should be able to get through this area without too many battles. And we're actually going to be coming back to this area for uh, a side quest involving the Dragoon Towers, but that side quest is not available until Disc 4. And it looks like we're going to have some new enemies here. I think you can run into bowling from the from the previous area here, as well as these enemies, which look like spring hitters and a terminator. The spring hitters are immune to status ailments. They can steal your gold, and the terminators are actually is. I think every enemy, but uh, every enemy but the succubus and the witch are immune to all status ailments. So just about everything here can't be hit by status ailments. You can get a platinum collar here as a drop from uh, the succubus enemy, but it's not. I don't know if it's worth getting. Um, there's an enemy here called Maximum Volt that can drop flash halls. But other than that, the drops really aren't noteworthy in this uh, in this area. Oh, luckily there is a shop. In, there is a shop in the Bellweb area, so I should be able to restock my items no problem. The enemies around here are tough, so you do need to watch yourself. And who, how the hell did they come up with the translation bowling for the name of an enemy? Who came up with that one? English button! Oh, I almost had it, too. Yeah, the timing, the counterattack timing on Maru's Cool Boogie Edition is just merciless. There's two, there's really two points where it can be interrupted, and they're both nasty. I've moved Maru to Cool Boogie from, uh, from, uh, what is it? Oh, a healing fog. Huh. I'm really glad I got to demonstrate that. What happens when you gain a Dragoon level and uh, a regular level at the same time. Al learned the Gasless spell, which is a full strength wind elemental attack at a single target. Not really useful given, given Al's magic stat, even as a Dragoon. Get an attack ball here, which I'm going to... Uh, what is that? Well, attack balls, to me, are basically Fender Trash. Fender Trash! Ah, here's that Maximum Bolt enemy I was talking about. Maybe we can get a Flash Hall from these guys, we'll see. They're pretty powerful, and they have, uh, what kinds of area of effect attacks do they have? Uh, they have Thunderbolts, I mean, they have Spark Nets, too, but... Yes. But basically, just a bunch of Thunder Elemental attacks, as you would expect from an enemy called Maximum Volt. They do also have a lot of HP. They have 700. And 700 HP is a lot for a regular enemy, and it's only going to get worse uh, as we proceed to Disc 4. Where we're going to start running into regular enemies uh, that have more than 1,000 HP on a consistent basis. That's a spark net on Maru. That's not going to do... Oh, jeez. Wow. Well... How much magic attack do these guys have? 83? Wow. That's a lot. I guess
guess they do give the most experience in gold out of all the enemies here. I wonder if I just should have been using magic items on them from the get-go, because their magic defense is low. But then I don't get addition practice, and I really need addition practice for these guys. Especially for Dark, because I want to get him off this Ultimate War God at some point. Uh, early in early in Discord, so that I can actually, you know, s start using his Soul Eater with Blazing Dynamo, his final edition, and that is just absurdly powerful. Here are those merchants I was talking about. Uh, no, we have customers here. Uh, to be honest, I think that this is a more absurd place to set up shop than the Casual Glacier. Because, yeah. Because this is past the Casual Glacier, so only people who make it through that icy hell will even get here. Um... Uh, this guy actually has some weapon upgrades that we want. Um, what does he even have? I, I know there's upgrades that we want. Uh, we have Partisan for Al, which is going to greatly help him. Um, heavy Mace for Maru. Uh, Giganto Armor for Kongle. And an Energy Girdle for Hashel. You can also purchase Giganto Rings here if you didn't get one to drop earlier. Uh, personally, I don't think they're worth a thousand gold. Uh, we already have. And you get items from this guy, which I'm going to want to get a bunch of. But I think I've got some crap in my inventory that I want to clean out. Like, uh, like definitely these status items. I definitely don't want these in my inventory. My other concern... Oh, the attack ball. I need to sell that. My other concern is that I'm running a bit low on uh, money. Yeah, I'm running, I'm running quite a bit low on money. Actually, you know what? I think I want to get a couple more, because, yeah, it is nearing the end of the disc. Never know what this game's going to do. Is that some kind of mana battery? Oh, that... I don't know what that is, because I didn't think humans had much magic power. You don't know, Rose? Rose? Wait, what? Shirley, what are you doing here? What now? Wait, there are souls trapped here? Oh, the dragoons that died. Wait, Mayfill? I thought Rose said she trashed that place completely. Remember what Shirley says. 
Uh, after, we, after we meet Emperor Diaz, we're going to be coming back here for a side quest to uh, recapture the souls of the Dragoons. However, there is one thing that we need to do in the Dragoon Towers on Disc 3. Even if you go up to the towers to try to fight the Dragoons, uh, you, you won't find them. You'll have to wait until Disc 4 to actually fight the Dragoons. But, I believe it's the center tower. It's either the center tower or the tower on the left. I forget which one it is, but one of them. Yeah, it is the center tower. If you go up, if you go up to, up to the altar up here, and press this, and press the, uh, the cross button, you will find the most bastardized stardust in this game. I have absolutely no idea how you're supposed to know this is here. There's no reason to come in here and look for this ever. Like, this is just a guy dang it if I've ever seen one. It's probably the biggest guy dang it in the game. Oh, here's a new enemy, Witch. They're actually one of the few light elemental enemies in the game. And if I recall, they have a lot of area of effect attacks. They can use Dancing Rays, Black Rains, Meteor Falls, and Thunderbolts. So I'm going to take care of them first. I also believe they have, yeah, they have 96 uh, magic offense. So I'm going to get this stupid bitch out of here. At least physical attacks do the trick. Witches actually have 200 magic defense, so using magic on them isn't a good idea. Most of the enemies here actually have uh, high physical defense. So if you're using a lot of magic, oh, that might be a problem. Ow! Well, I need to... You know what, I'm just going to use Dart's Edition to take this guy out. I don't know why one of them was able to, like, charge up, and then the other one was able to immediately use its attack that it's only supposed to use to charge up with. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm guessing it's a bug in, in the coding, where they have two of the same enemy in the battle, and it thinks that... Like, basically it makes an erroneous pointer reference or something. It's been so long since I've taken any, since I've taken any programming class that I, that I don't know if it would be a pointer issue or a memory issue or what it would be. But it basically, for the purposes of that attack, thinks that the two identical enemies in the encounter are the same enemy. This game is just... This is... I don't understand what it is about PS1 RPGs, but so many of them are just ridiculously buggy. Well, I guess it was Sony's first RPG, so I guess you could expect it to be a bit buggy-ish, but... Eh, I don't know. I don't know why this game is... why this game is so buggy. It's really buggy if you try to use, like, an AR with it. Or, like, any... like, any kind of... any kind of cheating device. This game does not react very well to them. It also makes... It also makes this game pretty much impossible to hack. Alright, let's head into the depths of... of this place. Surely you don't need to tell me that. Now this threw me off when I was uh, playing the game the first time that I thought I had to do something in the Dragoon Towers, and I didn't see this little entrance back here. 
Now there should be a handful of items back here. Oh. And I believe at the bottom of this building is Diaz's throne. But there's a handful of items in here first. Uh... Huh? I thought there was one over here. Apparently not. Apparently it's the next level down. Yeah, it is. There should be one back here. With Rose's hairband. This is a piece of headgear exclusive to Rose, as you may expect, that prevents instant death. So now if you use Rose, it is entirely possible to have a party of three characters all immune to instant death. That's going to be useful in a boss fight in the next disc. And here we get a spirit potion. And I believe that's the last of the treasure. And through this hallway lies the throne of Emperor Diaz. But I need to rearrange my setup. And prepare for a pretty big shocker, to say the least. Next time on Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon, we will begin the Disc 3 finale. See you later, everybody.